Hi, I'm Kevin Tucker, Junior Vice Commander of Sons of Union Veterans of the Civil War. I'm the descendant of a Civil War soldier. I'm here to talk about John G.B. Adams, Captain Jack. John Gregory Bishop Adams was born on October 6, 1841 in Groveland, Massachusetts, in the Merrimack Valley, to Isaac and Margaret Adams. After the Confederate firing on Fort Sumter, 19-year-old Adams, his older brother, and a close friend walked the three miles from his home in Groveland to Haverhill in order to enlist in the Hale Guards, a militia unit which was preparing to leave for war. However, finding the Hale Guards roster over full, they continued on foot a further five miles to enlist as privates in Major Benjamin Purley Poor's 1st Rifle Battalion, an old militia unit known as Poor's Savages, which was later folded into the 19th Massachusetts Infantry Regiment. The battalion was unique in that it was equipped with Enfield Windsor rifles and Sabre bayonets, weighing about 15 pounds. These were made in Vermont under a licensing agreement with the British government. Adams had a great determination and leadership abilities, even at a young age. By the time the 19th Infantry departed Linfield, Massachusetts on March 1, 1861, Adams had been promoted to a corporal in Company A. The 19th Massachusetts Infantry joined a brigade under the command of General Frederick W. Lander at Poolsville, Maryland, where Adams fought at the Battle of Ball's Bluff. The 19th Infantry then fought in the Peninsula Campaign and at the Battle of Antietam. At Ball's Bluff, Adams saw his first dead soldier on the battlefield, a prominent U.S. Senator in uniform, Colonel Edward Baker, a close friend of President Lincoln. He is the only sitting U.S. Senator to be killed in battle. Shortly after the battle, the 19th Massachusetts Infantry returned and settled into winter camp where Johnny Adams was promoted to first sergeant. During the seven days fighting on the peninsula, he was conspicuous for bravery at Fair Oaks, the Peach Orchard, Glendale, and Malvern Hill. The 19th Massachusetts fought at Fairfax Courthouse, Flint Hill, and Antietam. At Antietam, Adams' older brother was wounded, and another close friend whom Adams had enlisted with was killed. Lieutenant Adams had the unenviable task of writing the letter informing his friend's mother of his death. While serving as a second lieutenant in Company I, he was one of 18 Union soldiers who received the Medal of Honor for valor at the Battle of Fredericksburg. Adams recovered the regimental and national colors as a corporal and a lieutenant carrying them fell mortally wounded. With a flag in each hand, he advanced and the regiment was reformed on him. He was one of seven soldiers from the 19th Regiment who received the Medal of Honor during the war. Following Fredericksburg, Adams fought at the Battle of Chancellorsville, then the Battle of Gettysburg, where he was severely wounded on July 2, 1863, while coming to the aid of General Dan Sickles' Third Corps, which had been poorly positioned and was being flanked by the enemy. In this battle, Adams was the ranking first lieutenant in his regiment and had command of Company I. As he was unfurling the company colors, he was shot in three places and went down, unable to move. He was carried from the battlefield, bleeding profusely. Surgeons told his regiment that his wounds were mortal. As the battle raged around him, he was eventually moved away from the action to another hospital and left there among the wounded and dying men. When a surgeon finally had the chance to examine him, he told Adams that his wounds were, quote, very bad. Of the 15 men in his company, only six survived the battle. Adams was left for six days with little attendance from the surgeons. Only his own men, whenever they could slip away, came and tended to him. His wounds were not dressed properly and maggots were crawling into them. Finally, ladies from Gettysburg, volunteering as nurses after the battle, started caring for Adams. He survived another two days in the field before being finally shipped to a hospital in Baltimore. From there, he was able to make it back home to Massachusetts. Five months later, Adams rejoined the 19th, although against doctors' recommendations as his wounds had not fully healed. 
After Gettysburg, he was promoted to captain. His convalescence was relatively brief and he was able to return and fight at the Battle of the Wilderness, Battle of Spotsylvania Courthouse, and the Battle of Cold Harbor. During the Battle of Cold Harbor, Adams and the entire regiment were captured near Mechanicsville, Virginia on June 22, 1864. Adams was held at Libby Prison in Richmond, Virginia. He was later moved to Macon, Georgia and Charleston, South Carolina, where he and other officers were placed on Morris Island in an attempt to stop naval bombardment by the Union. Adams suffered greatly as a prisoner of war in the Confederacy, getting little food, little shelter, and forced to wear ragged clothing infested with fleas and vermin. He constantly battled disease and malnutrition. Once moved to Columbia, he and a comrade attempted escape by pretending to be part of a wood-gathering crew and slipping away. They were assisted for days by several African-American slaves, one of whom gave up her shoes to Adams, and white Union sympathizers but were eventually recaptured. Adams was held for a total of nine months before eventually being exchanged. The war ended shortly afterwards and Adams was discharged. After the war, Adams was a foreman for 10 years at the B.F. Doak and Company's shoe factory in Lynn. He served as an elector for the state in the 1868 presidential election. He left the foreman job to become an inspector in the Boston Custom House and later served as the postmaster of Lynn, and then deputy warden of the state reformatory at Concord. In 1885, he was elected sergeant-at-arms for the Massachusetts legislature, overseeing a staff of approximately 40 and earning a salary of $3,000, which is about $91,500 in today's money. Upon his discharge from the Army, Adams dedicated the rest of his life to assisting Union veterans. He joined the Grand Army of the Republic as the first member of General Frederick W. Lander Post No. 5 in Lynn, establishing his local post. He served as a delegate to the National GAR Convention 12 times and served as a department commander before being elected as Commander-in-Chief in 1893. At the time he was elected, he had been President of the Association of Survivor Survivors of Rebel Prisons for seven years. He was also a member of the Massachusetts Commandery of the Military Order of the Loyal Legion of the United States. Adams was one of the founders and trustees of the Soldiers' Home of Massachusetts. These Grand Army of the Republic members lobbied the state legislature, raised funds, and purchased the Highland Park Hotel at Powderhorn Hill in Chelsea as the site for the hospital. It was opened on July 25, 1882, when its first six residents were admitted. By the end of its first year, it was home to 248. Adams became the board of trustees second president and oversaw the raising of additional funds for expansion, including the erection of a hospital, which was named after him. In 1899, Adams published a memoir of his war service titled Reminiscences of the 19th Massachusetts Regiment. He died at age 59 on October 19, 1900, and is buried in Pine Grove Cemetery in Lynn at Aspen, Lot 3. This has been Kevin Tucker, Junior Vice Commander of Sons of Union Veterans of the Civil War. Thank you for your attention, and have a good evening.